Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the September 28th work session of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the meeting with a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Lori, would you please call the roll? Yep. Hetsky? Hetsky here. Aiken? Aiken here. Burton? Burton here. Knauer? Knauer here. Tidings? Tidings here. Sangster? Sangster here. Weissar? Here. O'Connor? O'Connor here. Prinzing? Prinzing here. Gray here. Hmm. I don't necessarily want to point out the fact that our counselor didn't say Weissauer here. Just said I was, here. I was thrown for a loop because I was trying to get into the Google Drive. And I mean, normally it's the, he's the I dotter and the T crosser, and I'm starting to question now. What's anyway, here? Do, we need, do we need outside counsel? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I don't think we need that. <clears throat> we have minutes from August 10th. Hopefully, everybody's had an opportunity to review them. And uh, can move we to approve. I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. <coughs> Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. Doug, you'd like to go through the tabled applications? Yep. Uh, so our first tabled application is 1676 Penfield Road. It's a Flower City Arcade expansion. Um, on Friday, uh, September 8th, the applicant submitted a revised um, site plan done by their surveyor. Um, the revised site plan does show some of the previously unpermitted work that was completed by the applicant. Uh, they've since come in for permits for that work, um, as well as a parking lot change, but does not provide um, substantial changes based on the previous PRC memo um, that staff put out or the tabling resolution from the planning board. Uh, we have sent them a rather detailed list of items of things that need to be taken into consideration and accounted for um, as part of a site plan, including um, hiring a professional engineer to be able to do the site design, especially around grading and stormwater. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll hear back um, something soon on that, but um, just want to give you guys an update on that. So is it almost as if there's a one step forward, two steps back? kind of thing a little bit or uh, a little bit yeah. um, a big issue has just been scope creep um, the original what was originally applied for and what the work that is currently under review um, keep changing change. um, you know the garage was previously um, to be torn down is currently being used may be used during construction may not be removed, is still being shown as <coughs> being removed. Um, the uses, uh, they were previously got a conditional use permit for the front building for uh, a specific use. Um, they're coming in potentially looking at changing that use in the front building. Um, the parking lot layout keeps changing and each iteration has to be re-reviewed to make sure it's meeting turnaround requirements and fire access requirements. Um, some additional work was done on the site, which um, required an alteration to the site plan because they, they added a patio space that in what was previously shown to be parking. Um, so um, we're hoping that as part of um, working with somebody who does site design, um, they can come up with a concept or a plan um, that works for them, works for their business, and that they can set um, without having to do significant changes. Doug, still, correct me if I'm wrong, they did secure a lease on some of the parking from Speedy's Plaza? Yes, as far as I'm aware, they do have a signed agreement. I don't know if that's been filed and is in, uh, in force, but they did have a, an agreement, signed agreement with Speedy's Plaza for 32 spaces. For long term? Uh, for, for, I believe it was a three year agreement, mm -hmm. but I, I can go back and check the, the numbers. Okay. Is there people living in that front house? 
president. Not right now. No. No. I thought he was. I, I they're they're, they're going was. to. Um, initially, the plan was two apartments and an art studio space. Mm. Um, I believe it's changing to one apartment in an art studio space and potentially another tenant space. Um, I'm not sure on that. Um, they haven't come back to the zoning board to change their conditional use permit, but I do know it's under, it's still under construction um, based on the previous approval, but uh, no temper final C have always been granted on the building. Are you still operating the arcade presently? They're still operating the arcade. I got to get over there. I haven't been there for a while. Check it out anyways. But. So we should probably continue, table. Yeah, continue the table, the table and <coughs> encourage them to get a <coughs> professional engineer. Mm -hmm. Engineer. Like got it. I, mean, I would think that for the length of time that's taking and the screwing around, they'd be better off in the long run just... Yeah. When they originally applied, doing it, the scope of work that they were looking at, um, working with a surveyor was was appropriate. Um, but as things keep changing and the scope of work keeps growing, yeah. they're they're starting to get outside of the professional yeah, the bounds scope of, of a, services of a surveyor's of a surveyor. work, yeah. right. and they're really into into engineering work. Okay, okay. I'll make the motion to continue table I'll tidings. Second. I'll Sorry. second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. <coughs> okay. All right. Our second tabled application, 2130 Fairport 9 Mile Point Road, the Chick fil A. Um, we have not heard anything from the applicant since their last uh, request to table um, prior to the um, canceled September meeting. Uh, so at this point, no action is required on the board. We want to continue table or just do nothing with this? You, you could take no action, or if there was something you wanted to add, you could make a motion to continue table. Okay, I guess we'll take no action. And then tabled, applica tabled application number three, uh, 2222 Penfield Road, the K9 Pet Resort. Uh, since our last meeting, the applicant has provided field sound studies, um, videos from other locations as well as um, information or background on, on each of the videos. Uh, information on the security system, spec sheets for the materials to be used in the renovation, uh, and responses to comments. Um, one question that did come up in a dialogue between staff and the applicant was um, the handling of waste. One of staff's initial comments was uh, regarding a dumpster enclosure. The previous building had dumpsters but no enclosure. Um, they've stated that they're going to use uh, a couple of residential style 95 gallon toters um, that would be sufficient for their needs. Um, and in discussions, they've uh, determined to uh, keep the toters inside the building until um, uh, waste day and then they'll bring them out. So they'll be stored inside the building. So, like in a little room that's just that, and then somebody holds their breath while they go in and <laughs> <laughs> and do that, or how, how does that work? I wonder. Didn't didn't they I mean, testify that waste from the pets mm -hmm. was handled independently of waste from mm -hmm. the operation of the facility? Uh, that would be a clarifying question. We can ask the applicant. Yeah, I, I believe they. We can go back and look at the testimony, but I believe that's what they said, and I believe they said that they have somebody come. Two or three times a week, uh, to gather, to clean it, to, to clean it and remove it from the premises. Yeah. yeah. Can we get a? Yes. Uh, maybe. Do you want me to move over? Yeah. Where do we? Uh, either next to there's Jim. A, or, there's a nice oh, chair in the back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Grab that one over at this one. Okay. Guys, Here, let me get this out of your way, Jerry. Divide and conquer. Yeah. That's yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, as, to, as to that particular question, everything that Doug said is exactly as I understand it, uh, in that the uh, waste will be, general waste will be contained in, in toters which will be held inside the building. The medical waste, uh, not, not, not medical waste, but the dog waste as I understand it will be removed separately 
uh, a couple, three times a week as, as is necessary. It could so be medical. There could, could, there could, could be, be some medicine could involved. There could be. <laughs> so I guess describe that. I mean, it's what, up to 80 or 100 dogs? Yeah, we, we estimated around 90 dogs. So anytime there's excrement, uh, it's individually picked up and bagged and then you know, disposed of, and then we'll have somebody come and pick it up a few times a week. Uh, as for who, I'm not sure yet. Um, okay, but in the, so in, it, in the it's stored for maybe two days. Yeah. But there's always, I mean, one or two days supply. If, yeah, if that's what you call it. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely a little. For all the kids that put in paper bags and you know light on fire on people's front yeah, porch or the doorstep for uh, a shift night. I'm assuming you pick it up with the, <laughs> the when you're walking dogs. Yeah, dog owners pick up with the plastic bags, tie it off so that it's it's not just like sitting there. Right, it's, it's just all not individual. Exposed and, yeah, right. and so, so you're saying the pickup position is still open. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm guessing that's going to be mine for. For a while, um, I'm, I'm used to it with so. my own. But then, what I was thinking was, we would have um, a separate room. Uh, we have plenty of square feet, and we don't need. This is more an architect's question. We can tell them what we need and where we'd like it uh, in the building, and maybe have outside access to the deck with a double door mm -hmm. or something like that, and then roll them out as needed. So, to your point of the separate waste containers, you know, that's in its own room with outside access, but it's closed off, so there's no odor. And right. then um, we roll it out when the people come pick it up. Okay. All right. Um, hopefully everybody's seen those <coughs> videos. And I couldn't get the Google Drive today. It actually asked for some of the documentation. I just was interested in the sound studies. and. The, Maybe they could elaborate on the uh, sound studies and the sound testing that was done since I couldn't get in the Google Drive earlier. You have, you may want to, may want to just pull it up, but the, the sound studies that are done, you may want to explain the methodology that. Uh, yeah, this is a little <coughs> bit above my pay grade, uh, but we Here's did. Applicant correspondence folder. We yeah. did uh, provide two sound studies. Give me one sec while I get this open. Uh, one from the Hamilton site and one from <coughs> Arizona. Um, and they were sound info. We had a consultant as well who uh, we did who who reviewed who reviewed all of our data and everything else and. And the, the basic fundamental is that we're, we're at a level which is around the, certainly the ambient noise level, but normally what you would expect as, as a household noise level, not, not anything substantially more mm -hmm. than that. I think we have talked about this previously. The fencing which is around the site, the buff tech fencing, is a sound absorbing fence. And that actually, uh, Mitigates a lot of the, a lot of the sound that would that would happen. We've, you know, the, the typical dog barking would be at the 75 to 80 decibel range. But as we as we have the fencing and and the other techniques that we have and the distance that we have to our other what they call sensory areas, um, you know that <coughs> that noise is nothing more than you'd expect from a regular office. Yep, that's correct. And uh, so, for example, the um, the Hamilton study they measured 18 barks using the fast A weighted response on the sound level meter, uh, and the results averaged uh, 63 decibels, 75 feet from the fence. Now, it is my understanding that Hamilton has a vinyl fence and doesn't have the Buff Tech fence, and the Buff Tech fence will absorb about 15 decibels of that. So we're left with just under 50 decibels, and if you're like me, you don't know what that is. Let me open up um, the other well, 50 one. 50 decibels yeah. is about um, lower than the talking level. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it drops off pretty quickly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that was from the Hamilton sound study. I mean, basically, what we have is you have the evolution of a lot of uses. Like you have the evolution of of mobile homes to manufactured homes to 
mm -hmm. uh, what was trailers and then uh, manufactured homes. Uh, you know, things have gotten better. Self-storage units have gotten better. In the same way, the technology relative to these uh, facilities has gotten a lot better. So even, mm -hmm. even something which is three or four years old is not quite going to have what this has. There's an understanding that there needs to be sensitivity to sound and to visual and everything else. So to that extent, the, the technology keeps on improving. Now, Jerry, is that based on the six-foot fence or the eight-foot fence? That was, number was based <coughs> on the eight-foot fence. The six-foot fence would block about 12 decibels. So that's not even a, and Jim, you can probably speak to this better so than I can, but that's not even 15. a noticeable difference. Yeah. Oh, I will. When, when you're done, AJ, I'll, I'll so show So that'd be about 20%, uh, right? Yeah. 15 down to 12. The, it, there's, there's some definite benefit to having the eight-foot high fence. I don't want to minimize that. I right. mean, we're in front of the zoning board to do that. Visual, aesthetic, control of the, of the dogs themselves, and everything else, and there is an impact on sound, but it's not a substantial impact when, when you try to uh, quantify that. But there's a real benefit to, uh, to having that, that fencer. Yeah, it's mostly a, uh, a safety issue because a dog can jump up and, and get over a six foot fence, whereas an eight foot fence they can't. We do have, uh, uh, it's like a, a safety netting it sticks out on the inside of the fence, almost like a, a barbed wire would. Sure. You know, the same kind of principle. Uh, so if the eight-foot fence isn't approved, we can do that. But, but yeah, so. Have you seen a, the sand lot? Have you seen that that dog can ah. jump? That dog yeah. can jump. 12 feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you don't want to encourage the dogs either. If you, exactly. if, you have, if you have a netting and they see a six-foot fence, they may be inclined to try. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and you don't necessarily want to encourage that. Well, that pond at the back end, will that be part of your property now? or? Part of the uh... on the back side, I believe that is not ours. Let me get a if I could see an aerial view. It's in between the two, right? Yeah, yeah let me pretty grab close. the site plan. Yeah. Well, we're going to be under lease on the site, right? Yeah, we will be. <clears throat> There's so. approximately You're three ponds. Up, Matt? There's about three ponds that are split between because this was originally part of a three lot subdivision: mm -hmm. 12, 8, 22, 18, 22, 22, uh, and then 22, 26. Um, and actually, I think 2214, we're all part of what's called the Pebble Creek subdivision. Mm -hmm. So most of the ponds are shared between them. Um, I believe at least three of the lots are, are owned by a single entity that has uh, the majority of the, the ponds on them. So who will be responsible for maintaining that? Uh, landlord. Our property owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a master developer. I, I think the Danielle's. the Rochester Regional mm -hmm. Health Facility in the front is also a lease. Yes, it is. Mistaken. Yeah. That's correct. Okay, so there's contiguous ownership of, of those two parcels, which are two of the major major users. Mm -hmm. Common area maintenance in the lease is, for, is uh, under the landlord's uh, okay. responsibilities. Jim, you had wanted to make a couple yeah. comments. Yeah, so, you know, I... I as we discussed uh, the last time you were before the board, um, the issue here is really satisfying the noise pollution standard. Um, so um, we've had some experience with this um, with, with other projects, um, projects that have a tendency to generate noise. Um, people assume that the noise is going to carry to their property and become a nuisance to them. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, I went back uh, to, to look at some of our, our own project files, and I, and I came upon this study that was actually done by Purdue University. So um, they, they engaged some uh, acoustic um, measurement firms, and they actually went to a bunch of dog kennels. And this is what they found, a single dog uh, a bark from a single dog can reach 100 decibels. Mm -hmm. um, uh, recorded range uh, from a kennel uh, <clears throat> was between 85 and 122 decibels. Um, but, you know, I think to the extent that we're trying to establish a record for the public record, that's at the source and not at the location where people could 
be nuisanced by a noise. So normally if this was an industrial site, we would probably ask you to hire an acoustic consultant to go into the community in the immediate vicinity and establish actual ambient noise levels, all different times of day and night, different days of the week, so we actually know what that is. Um, but in this particular case, uh, ambient noise levels are almost always found to be in that 70 mm -hmm. dB range. It is what it is. And sound dissipates as it travels a distance. So, um, you know, even if you took, uh, you know, a range in here and say, you know, the, the range that I gave AJ today was 112. Mm -hmm. Well, by the time you take the reduction due to the fence, so assuming the fence was installed correctly, um, and the dissipation of the source of the noise from its origin to the neighboring properties, and couple that with the ambient background noise, it's probably pretty reasonable to assume that um, the noise generated by the dogs uh, when they're in the exercise yard is probably going to be in that 70 dB range, um, which is generally like accepted to mm -hmm. be Speaking. an acceptable level of, of noise. <clears throat> and of course, we point out here that um, the dogs in your facility will not be out at night mm -mm. when the ambient noise level is reduced and people are trying to be quiet. Um, so I just wanted to, to get that on the record because I think it's important for people listening here tonight to know that there are other factors at play <coughs> other than the generation of sound uh, in the yard it, itself. Right. Thank you. Um, how's staff, any additional concerns? Everything been satisfied mm -hmm. for this? Yep. Okay, anybody have any other concerns? Bob, no. Kelly? Okay. I guess my only, if we were gonna, if we were gonna talk about conditions, um, I think one of the conditions should be with respect to the gaps in and around the fencing. Because if you look at the uh, test data that CertainTeed engaged mm -hmm. to do the acoustic test on the panels, it was a single eight by eight panel and they, they went around with um, a device that measured air leakage and then they sealed all those gaps up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a significant difference in mm -hmm sound transmission in any assembly if you've got gaps in there. So I think that's, and, and it's probably to your benefit, um, just the, the last thing you, you want or we want is to have people call up and, and complain that they're it's too loud. hearing. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I said that last time. The, the last thing that we want to deal with is uh, complaints from the town, neighbors, or anybody. I have so. to say, I mean, Watching the video of the guy, you know, videotaping all these dogs in this yard, I'm thinking, would, would they put, like, barbiturates in their food <laughs> or something? I mean, they, they were silent. Awesome. There's a whole, I mean, dogs everywhere, mm -hmm. tons of them. Yeah, and when, they're, when they're playing together in the yard, they're usually quiet. They will, um, when I was there, uh, we, when we were on the inside, we approached the indoor play area, and when they can see people, they would jump up on the glass and, and they would get riled up and start barking. But when they're out there by themselves with their, um, you know, we were a group of people, they're usually quiet. And they, I, you know, like I said, I think here, uh, that was in my same experience at the Penfield Dog Park when I went with my friend who asked me the same question. There's 30, 40 dogs running around and it's, and it's silent. Yeah. So. So that's exactly what this study from Purdue found. They also found that um, there are specific recordings, mostly classical music, that are designed to calm dogs. You, you, can, you can keep this. Oh, thank you. Um, so you could actually pipe music out there, and that when the dogs, the dogs would get excited when one of the handlers would go out. Mm -hmm. If they weren't seeing people that they wanted to talk to to 
ask for whatever it is that they're looking for, they were relatively calm. Mm -hmm. no, it's, uh, and I just experienced that twice, um, which was my prior experience with any uh, place like this. I went to Adenon, they have a chain link fence. As soon as I parked the car and got out and the dog saw me, they start making noise. Where I take my dog for training uh, at Dog Works in Victor, they have a chain link fence with a, a tarp over it and there's a hole in it. And the dogs that are out there don't make any noise, but the one that's looking through the hole at me is barking. So that's why our fence is completely opaque and away from any uh, people activity. Okay. So we have uh, part two. Part two, part three AF. Yep. Ready to go and a, um, uh, draft approval resolution. So uh, I'm comfortable. I guess can somebody make a motion to authorize me to sign the EAF? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. And maybe entertain a motion to approve the resolution. So moved. I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Okay. Get too far thank off you very it. much. Yeah, we thank have you guys a very much. Ritz Carlton coming to Penfield. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. I have two dogs. I figured somebody <laughs> here would be. I am too, actually. I, I, can't, tell I can't tell you what this means to me. Thank you all. It's yeah, great. Sure. Thank you. Good luck. And thank you for the I look forward board. to visiting the zoning board and uh, <laughs> getting this place going. Yeah, great. Good yeah. luck. Thank, thank you. you. You might want to mention to the ZBA. Encourage the eight foot fence. Okay. <coughs> Some, somehow or other, maybe maybe staff can. <coughs> if, if that's something the board really wants, wants to discuss well, why, why quickly, why don't, why don't I bring it up here? I, I mean, we've done this in the past. If, if you want to, you want to ask staff to send a memo to the ZBA, letting them know that we encourage the the yeah, approval of the it. eight foot tall fence because of the obvious benefits to this project. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would Sounds like we should do yeah okay I can do that uh, maybe we make a motion to do that send that letter so moved I'll second Aiken Aiken aye Hetsky Hetsky aye <laughs> Burton Burton aye Knauer Knauer aye Tidings Tidings aye thank you very much thank you sure Thank thanks you. Jerry thanks. see ya good seeing you all okay. nice to see you all all right, then okay. I have one new business item for you guys, and that is uh, we sent out mm, a couple weeks ago the draft 2024 planning board meeting dates, mm -hmm. that time of the year again. Um, so we want to get those in and solidified so we can get them on the town calendar for next year. They're all basically the second and fourth Thursday of the month. Does anybody have any major issues where they would request a change of date? So I, I, I'm not suggesting you change anything, but we're gonna be out of the country um, from the 9th to the 28th of May. So you'd miss both May meetings? I'll miss both, um, and, and uh, uh, as well the uh, February 8th. <clears throat> I can send you a note on that if you want. Okay. That, that's this year's. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> so, do we want to somebody make a motion to approve the calendar for next year? Yeah, I'll make the motion to approve it. Yeah, I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. Anything else for us, Doug? That's all I have for you guys tonight. All right. Well, I will say that this format, this layout, seems to work pretty well. We may want to 
If we have an applicant speak, I guess that worked out okay tonight. We may want to come up with a better formal uh, Yeah, a lot place, of times the applicants really want to sit next to their consultants or their attorneys. Yeah. And, or yeah, Kelly, Kelly can sit here next to me and we can way put them over them. here. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's, I, I, overall I like this for a work session. So thanks guys for setting that up. And if there's no more business before us, we will adjourn. Thanks everybody for coming. Have a great night. <laughs>